Hello, my name is Antonin Novak. I am from Le Mans University in France and today for the eForum Acousticum 2020 I will be talking about compression and expansion nonlinear effects in an electrodynamic loudspeaker experiments versus model failure. So I will start with short introduction and linear model, then I will talk about nonlinear model and then about my experiments and why I call this work model failure and then about physical causes that are behind this failure. So let's start with the linear model of a loudspeaker. On the electrical part we have magnetic circuit and voice coil and the first linear equation describing the electronic loudspeaker is that the voltage across the loudspeaker is equal to the current running through the resistance and inductance of the coil plus force factor times velocity. On the mechanical part we have membrane surround and spider that together with the coil are moving in the loudspeaker and the second linear loudspeaker equation is that the force due to the applied current is equal to the force on the mechanical part where we have mass acceleration plus mechanical losses times velocity plus stiffness times displacement. When we use this model, this linear model, and plot the displacement over voltage as a fun function of frequency and displacement over current as a function of frequency, we can see that we have the same curves for different driving voltages. And this is absolutely normal because it's a linear model, so it needs to obey a scaling property of linear systems. So these curves are completely independent on the driving input level because it's a ratio between two values here and as well here. When we want to approach more and more the real world and real loudspeakers, we need to apply nonlinear models. So the most important nonlinearity in the magnetic circuit is the BL as a function of X, so the force factor as a function of displacement, where the force factor is dropping when we reach higher and higher values of displacement. This is because the coil is uh, going out of the magnetic circuit or the gap inside the magnetic circuit and so when it quits it can see less and less of the magnetic flux and consequently less and less force so force factor on the mechanical part we have stiffness dependent on displacement basically when we want to stretch the surround and the spider more and more it is more and more difficult to stretch it even more and so the stiffness which is newtons in newtons per meter increases so we need to put more and more newtons newtons to go to higher and higher values of displacement in meters so both these curves and both these nonlinearities are telling us that it is more and more difficult to reach higher and higher values so we need to create more and more effort to reach to higher values because the force factor is dropping so for the same amount of let's say input voltage reaching higher displacement voltage uh, values we have less of the force factor so we need to put more and more force and also here when you want to achieve higher displacement well the stiffness is higher so it's stiffer and it's uh, we need to put more force to elongate the uh, this, the, the surround and spider even more. When we apply these two nonlinearities <coughs> on the modeling and we plot displacement over voltage and displacement over current, we can see that we don't have any more the same curve for different driving levels, but different curves, which is normal because it's a nonlinear system right now, so the scaling property is not valid anymore. And we can see sort of compression like behavior which goes together with, with, with what I said con uh, concerning the force factor and KMS. It's more and more difficult, so it takes more and more effort to reach higher and higher values of displacement for higher and higher uh, excitation levels. When I did this in experiments, so I used very basic simple setup where I have just fibrometer measuring displacement and then measuring current and voltage. I used two uh, loudspeakers, two different loudspeakers, but of a similar size, loudspeaker number one, loudspeaker number two. When I did these measurements and plot displacement over current as a function of frequency for loudspeaker number one and loudspeaker number two, 
we can see that well first cloud speaker number two is distorting or it seems to be more linear from this point of view because the curves are much closer to the other even if they are there is still a little bit shift of resonance frequency and increase here but cloud speaker number one seems to be much less linear because the the increase in well the change in curves is uh, very very high when we change the driving input voltage we can see the shift of resonance frequency is very important and also we have increasing values here which is contrary to what we have seen with the nonlinear model in the nonlinear model we predicted the compression like behavior so going downwards and here we can see sort of expansion like behavior in the experiments so it seems from the experiments that it's uh, let's say less uh, well more and more easy to approach higher and higher values of displacement over current which is not very intuitive and it goes contra the uh, the linear model and we can see the same thing in the displacement over voltage for the same driving input voltage we can get higher and higher ratio of displacement over voltage so expansion like behavior and when we measure distortion to verify if loudspeaker number two is distorting less we have <laughs> even more uh, more weird results because loudspeaker number one is distorting less it's quite obvious here from from this measurement at 20 hertz and for four volts rms we have less distortion here but when we see these curves mainly these we can say that loudspeaker number two seems to be more linear than loudspeaker number one but from the distortion point of view no we have more distortion for loudspeaker number two and we can see it both in the frequency domain and in the time domain where the signal of velocity is obviously more distorted here than the signal of velocity of loudspeaker number one so in the second part of my presentation i will try to explain the physical causes and why we see what we see and why the model fails well one effect which is very important to take into account is called pain effect and this effect is well known by people studying rheology studying viscoelastic materials like rubbers like materials that are used to create surround and spider the suspension of the loudspeaker and the definition of this pain effect is that it, there is a dependence of the storage modulus on the applied uh, amplitude of the applied straight strain which translated to uh, electroacoustic world means that the stiffness of the surround and the spider may depend on the amplitude of the displacement and it becomes lower and lower the cause for this is breakage and recovery of hydrogen bonds between the fillers and the polymers inside the structure of the the materials but uh, what is more important for us are rather the consequences it's a softening phenomenon so which means that with higher amplitude of displacement we get lower and lower values of stiffness so stiffness decreases with increasing strain so increasing displacement amplitude and this is what we can already see in uh, works for example from 2007 Volgan Klippel in his very nice paper paper on dynamic measurement of loudspeaker suspension parts he shows this graph where we can see the displacement as a function of frequency for different driving levels and we can see that the resonance peak is shifting towards left which means that the stiffness is lower so we have softening phenomena in 2014 with our colleagues my colleagues Pierre Cloton and Laurent Simon we developed a method to measure the stiffness as a function of instantaneous displacement but also as a function of driving level and we can see as well here that the stiffness is decreasing with increasing level and we can see this on the loudspeakers we have measured in this work so we applied the method to measure the stiffness as a function of instantaneous displacement but also as a driving voltage level and we can see that both speakers number one and number two obey this this kind of behavior that the stiffness is becoming lower and lower with increasing driving voltage when we compare these results with the ones i have shown you before for these two loudspeakers 
So we can now understand why we have this huge increase in uh, the ratio of displacement and current compared to this one. Well, here we can see that the stiffness drops from almost 1200 to 600. And so we have a huge shift in resonance frequency and huge increase here. So it's since it's less stiff, it's easier to reach higher values. In loudspeaker number two, the ratio is not so high. Here we have like 1450 and the mean stiffness here would be probably 1200. So the ratio is much lower and consequently we have much lower shift in resonance frequency and much lower increase in voltage in displacement over current, sorry. When we take a look on a distortion, well, distortion was measured at 20 Hertz for four volts RMS. So four volts, this is this curve, which is much more flat compared to the curve in loudspeaker number two. And so now it seems to be more intuitive why we have less distortion here and more distortion for loudspeaker number two. Well, the curve is much more flat and consequently the KMS is for this particular level seems to be more linear than for loudspeaker number two. It might be also the force factor that might be different in both loudspeakers, but I think it's mainly due to these two nonlinearities here, much more nonlinear than here. So to conclude, the pain effect is something that causes softening behavior of suspensions, and we can see it in loudspeakers as well. It causes expansion-like behavior when you take a look on uh, displacement over voltage and displacement over current, which is contrary to what the classical nonlinear model predicts. It predicts the compression, compression-like behavior. It is very difficult to take into account in modeling because the storage modulus, the stiffness, depends not only on strain but also on the entire history of the formation. So it's not very easy to take into account in modeling. So thank you very much for attention. If you have any question, you can ask right now or send me an email. Thank you very much.